Hi, my name is Malak. And my name is Hogar. And today we're going to be discussing the novel The Great Gatsby by Fitzgerald. So Hogar, tell me, how have you been enjoying the book so far? I've been enjoying the book very, very much. And this is because I've noticed a lot of themes in the book, and especially the theme of perception versus reality. This is the one that really caught my eye. In page 35, when Nick says he was talking to his therapist and he was telling him about his experience long time ago, and he said it's more that he was a German spy during the war. One of the men nodded in confirmation. He was telling his therapist about Great Gatsby. This uses lexical choice. Uh, it was used through the term German spy that suggests that he was evil and when they all nodded means that they all agree with him. And this created some like suspicious tone and the people's perception of Gatsby was that he, he lived a crazy secret life and killed people in cold blood when in reality, he was just a normal man who served in the army. So Hogar, was there anything else, any other example that you noticed within the theme of perception versus reality? Actually, yes. The rich exaggerated their perception of other people for amusement. And also, the owl's eye that, were, that was on the street says that Gatsby's entire life is like a show as if it's not real life. And the theme, uh, the theme of perception and reality is also hinted from the title of the story. Gatsby is named the Great Gatsby as if he's some inhuman being because he's so great in everyone's, uh, in everyone's perspective, including Nick's. And the reality of Gatsby's life is undetermined. And all that exists is how people perceive him. Yes, I totally agree. What do you think about the class or like what, what do you think about the book so far? Uh, as you said, I would like to add to what you said that there were many noticed themes and theories within the story. And the, and the theme that I thought about most was class because it's the theme that was most common in my opinion within the story. Uh, Fitzgerald quotes, a fantastic form where ashes grow like wheat into ridges and hills in grotesque gardens gardens, where ashes take the forms of houses and chimneys in rising smoke. This is evident in page 20. Um, Fitzgerald uses juxtaposition to compare the imagery between the comparisons of the Valley of the Ashes and Tom Buchanan's house, which is, uh, which is, um, which is um, evident in palaces of fashionable eggs littered along the water. Moreover, so that together the two descriptions of the different locations create a divisive setting so that the readers can, be, can easily compare between Tom Bashanan's house and the Valley of the Ashes. Furthermore, this text develops the theme of social classes within, within the story, whereas the lower class is referred to as gray, which shows how they refer to them as poor people. But when they come to talk about Daisy, for instance, the color that best represents her is white, which shows purity. I actually agree. However, was there any like other example that portrayed social classes as well? Yes, indeed there was. Another example, for instance, was when Fitzgerald quoted, he was a blonde, spiritless man, anemic and faintly handsome. Fitzgerald uses this quote to describe, to describe Wilson. Tom is always described as strong and capable, but when, but when Wilson's character is introduced in the text, he's portrayed as weak and lifeless, which really balances out between the two social classes within this chapter. I actually totally agree with you. <clears throat> and I see like when they talk about gender in the book, the person who really, really demonstrates gender in the book is Tom Buchanan. So Hogar, tell me, why do you think that? This is because in chapter two, when they were having a party all together with Tom Buchanan's mistress, the one he's cheating on with on his wife, Daisy, she kept on mentioning and chanting Daisy's name, even though he told her multiple times not to. Tom Buchanan broke her nose with his open hands. This is what it said in page 30. Fitzgerald uses lexical choice within the term broke to emphasize on the extent to which she hurt Myrtle and is, he hurt Myrtle and is more empowered than her. In this text, Tom is characterized as aggressive, suggesting that he is more powerful than Myrtle for having the ability to hurt her and hurting her in the end. 
Furthermore, this develops the theme of misogyny and the story suggesting that the men hold more power over women in the society and they're the dominant and superior ones. Was there another example in the story that demonstrated Tom Bishannon as a great example of gender roles within the text? Actually, I can tell you more about Tom Buchanan. This further demonstrates how Tom is like a dominant and superior man that represents how men were at that time. He is the dominant one that everyone follows and has to listen to. Like I said, when he broke her nose just because she refused to shut up, this seems like an exaggeration. And if the roles were reversed, it would have been normal. But men have the absolute power over women, even if it means hurting them. Yes, I completely agree with you. And I really feel like this reflects maybe not in our modern world today, but definitely in the Roaring Twenties at the time when this book was written. Why do you think that? Because in Chapter 3, all of the people from West Egg were meeting at a party where alcohol was served, quit Fitzgerald quotes, and champagne was served in glasses bigger than finger bowls. This is evident in page 33, 38. Uh, in this text, Fitzgerald uses hyperbole to represent Gatsby's wealth and power th through the glasses the champagne was served in. Moreover, this characterizes the high social classes as people that are very blindsided er and not aware of society they are surrounded by. Furthermore, this, this signifies the Roaring Twenties the Roaring Twenties provision played the main role at the time and that at the party specifically. The crime of purchasing alcohol was very much supported by the wealthier class. And I really feel like this definitely reflects on the Roaring Twenties because this is what people like, even outside the book, this is what society used to do in the Roaring Twenties. That is actually very true because prohibition was a very big issue in the 1920s and it caused a lot of trouble. But even though it was supported by the higher class, it still made a lot of bad effects on the 1920s that time. So I can see how this relates to the great Gatsby and how the wealthier class in the, in the novel supports prohibition, even though it can cause a lot of trouble. Overall, I feel like Fitzgerald did a great job to represent and display all the themes within the story uh, to show the themes that were actually going on within the 1920s as we've learned in class. That is actually very true. And it helped me realize how the 1920s was actually a time of like bad stuff as well where the prohibition was going on. Yes. Thank you for listening. Thank you.